Stormwater runoff is basically the water that flows off of a landscape primarily for precipitation. And in an undisturbed landscape, trees might take up some of that precipitation. We might get water that's actually taken up by vegetation and soils. We get water that's stored in, in topographic depressions. And this all serves to basically slow, hold, and filter the water before it discharges into our water bodies. It turns out a lot of aquatic life depends on that clean water that's basically filtered and held and, and slowed down by these watershed processes for them to survive. Now during construction, we remove trees, we tend to compact soil, we remove vegetation, we change the topography. We essentially wipe out those really necessary watershed processes that these aquatic habitats depend on. When we expose soils during construction, those soils can be easily eroded. They basically flow towards our water bodies. They settle out through a process called sedimentation. And excess sedimentation is really an issue for aquatic habitats. Fortunately, there are some things that we could do with our construction sites to, to better manage them and actually minimize these impacts to aquatic uh, habitats. Construction activity is a sign of a healthy economy. Construction projects are necessary to provide housing, build infrastructure, and create energy, and even clean water. A healthy construction economy creates jobs, develops businesses, but it's important that we minimize the impact to the environment during the construction process. Stormwater discharges from construction sites are regulated through the National Pollutant Discharge Elimination System. In California, this program is administered by the State Water Resources Control Board. We've adopted the Construction General Permit. We also call it the CGP. All projects that disturb more than one acre of soil are required to obtain coverage under the CGP. A project smaller than an acre might also have to obtain coverage if it's part of a larger common plan of development. Penalties for non-compliance can be substantial. By law, we're required to recover all of the economic benefit of non-compliance. That's not just the avoided costs. More information on the permit and the related information can be found on the State Water Board's website. So the legally responsible person in a construction permit is essentially the project proponent. And it's typically the landowner and not the contractor. Now there are a couple things I want to mention about the legal responsible person. It's basically the, the person that's responsible for permit compliance. And the legal responsible person must also, are, they're responsible for obtaining coverage and they file the, what are called the permit registration documents or PRDs for the project. Critical resources for the LRP are available on the State Water Resources Control Board website on Stormwater webpage. There you can find the construction link and the CGP. The CGP implements the federally required National Pollutant Discharge Elimination System. Attachment 5 of the CGP is the glossary, which defines the LRP. It would be useful to familiarize yourself with the definition for the approved signatory who can be authorized by the LRP to execute, certify, and submit the LRP's permit-related filings. A construction site does not have permit coverage until the State Water Board issues the LRP a Waste Discharger Identification Number, or WDID. The WDID is issued online through the Stormwater Multi-Application Reporting and Tracking System, or SMARTS. A link to SMARTS is available on the State Water Board's Stormwater webpage. The first step in obtaining permit coverage is to register the LRP in SMARTS. There are two ways of registrations for new LRPs. The first type of registration is for new users who are not associated with organizations or businesses that have already registered in SMARTS. The other type of registration is when the LRP is replacing an existing LRP for an organization or business that is already registered in SMARTS and has an active WDID number. In both cases, it is important for the new LRP to read the certification statement required within SMARTS. The LRP will certify under penalty of law that the submitted PRDs were prepared under the direction of the LRP and that qualified individuals properly gathered and evaluated the information submitted. The LRP is also certifying that user ID and password constitute the electronic signature of the LRP. The LRP's user ID and password should not be shared with other people. The PRDs are described in Appendix B of the CGP. PRDs include Stormwater Pollution Prevention Plans, or SWIPs. There are additional requirements depending on the type of construction. 
The permit requires that qualified SWIP developers, or QSDs, prepare the SWIPs. The CGP also requires qualified SWIP practitioners, or QSPs, to manage the daily implementation of CGP requirements. Locating a list of QSDs and QSPs is simple. Go to the California Stormwater Quality Association's website at casqa.org. Scroll down the homepage and you will find a link to the QSD and QSP lookup tool hosted by the Office of Water Programs at the California State University, Sacramento. You can restrict your search to geographic areas. As an LRP, it's critical to find and work with qualified QSDs and QSPs. The QSP is your eyes and ears in the field. They're the person that's going to put boots on the ground and uh, critically evaluate the construction project. Oftentimes contractors will supply QSPs, but in my opinion it's important as an LRP to find a QSP that's going to report to you and give you the critical information you need to manage the job site properly. If available in your organization, an approved signatory can be a big help. Approved signatories can sign, certify, and electronically submit your permit registration documents, notices of termination, annual reports, and other required information for a specific project. Appendix 5 of the permit describes those who can serve as an approved signatory. Linking to the approved signatory is done from the main menu in SMARTS. This is also the location to link data entry persons and laboratory users. To link these users to a project, you need to have the user ID of the approved signatory, data entry person, or laboratory user. Next, SMARTS requires the LRP to select which of the LRP's registered organizations they wish to link to the approved signatory, data entry person, or laboratory user. The role of the individual being linked is selected. Finally, the facility or site associated with the organization is also selected, so the appropriate WDID with that organization is linked to the approved signatory, data entry person, or laboratory user. Water board staff will perform inspections at construction sites to ensure compliance with CGP requirements. Local inspectors will also perform stormwater inspections on job sites to assure compliance with local ordinances. If CGP compliance issues are identified, often local inspectors will refer those issues to the water board. As an LRP, it's critical to develop a good working relationship with both local and water board inspectors so that small maintenance issues don't turn into larger compliance issues. It's a common misconception that stormwater requirements don't exist or are relaxed during the dry season in California. This simply is not true. Stormwater requirements exist year-round on construction sites. There's also a misconception that stormwater requirements are relaxed or changed during the vertical phases of construction. This is not true either. Whether you're performing grading operations, installing underground utilities, or vertically building structures, Erosion and sediment control is required during all phases of construction. It's important to develop partnerships with all who are working on your construction sites so that they know how to perform their work in a stormwater compliant manner. To learn more about California's water issues and the state and regional water quality control boards, go to youtube.com and check out other videos created by Water Boards Videos.